The concept of generating a note in the harmonic series parallels in some ways the generation of a note in the banking system. Both processes of note generation are based in sound mathematics and workable theory. But both the banking system and the harmonic series have been corrupted by the power of ruling elites to legally regulate and distort them. Both systems are now based in debt rather than supply and produce false fiat notes. The banking system generates its notes through loans. Whenever someone requests a loan, commercial banks use new money to make that loan. This money is not saved. It hasn't been set aside in one part of the economy to enable growth in another part. That's how capitalism works because capital is saved resources. But a debt-based monetary system is not capitalism. The system we have is called debt monetization. Here, money isn't saved to loan out. It's created to loan out. The old way the banking system generated notes was simply by issuing receipts for your deposit. Centuries ago, we began using paper notes in the form of receipts that represented how much gold or silver, the real money, we had deposited in the bank. We would present those receipts to the bank later when we wanted to withdraw our money. So paper currency came about originally as an IOU. It represented what the bank owed an individual in gold or silver if they chose to redeem the note. It was, by definition, the bank's debt to the individual. As currency denominations, like the dollar, became a thing, a standard developed that determined how much gold was represented by one dollar. This was called the gold standard, and while it was in place, it prevented a central bank from creating too much money through debt. Instead, money was linked to the fixed supply of gold that backed it. But with debt monetization, there is no limiting feature, like the gold standard, to prevent an excess of debt-based notes from being created. And so today, trillions of dollars of literal debt are pumped into our economy each year. Musical temperament, the process of deliberately mistuning scales, produces fiat musical notes in a process very much like a central bank printing fiat currency notes. The term fiat implies that a currency, or in this case, a musical frequency, has been artificially and arbitrarily determined by a human decision, rather than by natural processes, like the note generation seen in the harmonic series. The harmonic series generates a note through the process of dividing a previous supply of notes. Because of this, note creation is always limited by the number of notes that came before. This limiting nature of a previous supply is the creative tension between the outward movement of expansion, the power of two, and the inward movement of division, the power of three. Ernst Levy called the octave boundary a containment of an infinity of tones, but the boundary of the octave is not a limiting force. Within it, notes may subdivide to infinity without ever coming into contact with the walls of their octave container. What keeps the scale from growing too large too quickly is not the octave boundary, but the supply of notes in the previous octave. And so, while the power of three fathers creation, it does so within the limitation of a previous supply. In the banking system, Note creation is supposed to be limited by a previous supply, too. Throughout history, that limiting supply was the natural amount of precious metals mined from the Earth. But humanity has always resisted this limitation imposed by nature. 
In fact, the pursuit of alchemy in Francis Bacon's Renaissance world was an attempt to artificially increase the supply of gold beyond the amount provided by Mother Earth. Alchemy was an ambitious attempt to inflate the supply of gold. In 1605, Francis Bacon shared one of Aesop's fables showing the foolishness of chasing gold. In this fable, the search for easy gold yields productive effort, which always results in a supply of commodities that will then function as money. Edible crops, useful inventions, tools, clothing, shelters, things people actually need. Gold, beyond simple adornment, is used for almost nothing but the procurement of these useful items that our survival demands. As the old adage goes, you can't eat gold. Its highest purpose might simply be its limiting tether on the supply of currency. Bacon rejected the idea that money constituted wealth. He wrote, It is not monies that are the sinews of fortune, but it is the sinews and steel of men's minds, wit, courage, audacity, resolution, temper, industry, and the like. Jean-Baptiste Say echoed Bacon's view from New Atlantis that money and goods were as one. According to Say, money is supply, and, like notes in the harmonic series, represents a previously generated frequency or value of goods produced in the past. In the English language, the terms money and means are interchangeable. Money is a means to an end, but it's not an end in itself. Bacon further emphasized this point in Advancement of Learning. He writes, One of the commonest errors while men fly to their ends when they should intend their beginnings. The concept of debt can be defined in exactly the same way. A manipulation of time allowing men to fly to their ends before attending first to production. The first chakra, the previous supply from which the end is to be attained. But while money is intended to function as a means, our current debt-based system treats money as an inflatable doubling octave. Debt-based money occupies the even-numbered harmonics of the series rather than the odd allowing money to be multiplied without constraint through the act of inflation to metastasize without the limiting, tethering supply of the odd-numbered means. The harmonic series is an oscillation between halves and doubles. The halving and doubling are intended to work as limiting checks. The odd numbers are constantly pulling the doubling octaves back down through subdivision. It's a creative tension based on the power of three to divide the supply and the power of two to multiply the supply. Only fiat currency succumbs to the unchecked process of octave doubling. That's because fiat money isn't real. It's representational and, as such, should represent a supply of real goods and commodities that can't be inflated or magically multiplied. There is no alchemy by which to create two loaves of bread when there was initially only one. Just as the octave requires its expansive nature to be checked by the Mies, fiat money requires its expansive nature to be checked by supply. In this way, money reverts back to its previous form of supply rather than expanding out into a future form of debt. I'm grateful for any feedback. Please leave your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching.